Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can create a map with location markers on it and also associated pop-ups. So when a user clicks on one of the locations, they get a little bit more information about it. So for this, I'm going to be using Leaflet, which is a free and open source library for creating interactive maps. So in this example, I'm importing it into my project via two CDN links, one to a style sheet, and the other to a main JavaScript file. So to get the latest version of these links, you can go to the official Leaflet website, to the download section, and the links are there for you to copy and paste into the head of your HTML. Another option is that you can download the data on those links to local files, and then link to them via a link and a script tag. The final option is to install it in your project folder from the command line using npm install leaflet and then importing the library from its location in the node modules folder. So whichever of those methods you go for, once you've imported it into your project, you should have available to you in your JavaScript an object under the reference L, which is the library itself. So before doing anything else, let's check to see that it's there. So we're not getting an error not defined message here which is what you would expect if nothing exists for the reference. And if we take a closer look at this object, which is the library itself, you can see that it mainly consists of functions you can use to construct a map. So the first of these that we're going to be using is this one here, the map function. So with this, we can create a new map in the DOM. So I'm going to get rid of this console lock here and call map. And the way that this works is you enter as an argument the ID of the element into which you want the map to appear. So I've already created an element with an ID of map. And I'm going to store the return value of calling the map method, which is a reference to the new map that has been created. Now, to be able to see the map in the DOM, you need to set some dimensions for the element into which it is being injected. So I've done that already in CSS here. So the map is going to expand to fill this space. So you already want to think about when setting these values, the width relative to the height, because you can change the zoom on the map in JavaScript, but the relative dimensions are fixed. So it's important to keep this in mind when you are setting these values. Now, the first setting that we want to apply to the map is to set its initial view in terms of the coordinates and also the zoom level. So to do that, you call the set view method on map, passing in the coordinates first and second, the zoom level. So if you're not sure what the coordinates are that you'd like to focus in on, then you can go to OpenStreetMap. So I'm going to be using OpenStreetMap as the data source for the map in this example. So it's appropriate to get the coordinates from there because I can also get the zoom level as well. So the markers that I'm going to be setting are for airports in England. So I want the view for the map to be somewhere in the middle here. So if I click on show address, then it gives me here the coordinates for this initial view. And I can just copy and paste those into the array here and the zoom level. So to get the current zoom level on this map, you can inspect the URL. So it's this first value here before the coordinates. So I'm going to use this to set the initial zoom level on this map that I'm creating. Now to be able to see this content on the map, we still need to add a data source for it because leaflet isn't the data source itself. So if I was to save this now and take a look in the DOM, we just have the UI here. So as I mentioned, the data source for this map is going to be OpenStreetMap. So rather than type this all out because it's quite long, I'm going to paste here a suggested code snippet from the Leaflet website. So what this code is doing is setting this URL as a data source and Leaflet is going to insert into these values here, the correct zoom, latitude and longitude, getting that data from OpenStreetMap. And the initial values it's going to insert there are the values that we passed into set view. 
Now to set this as the data source for the map we created, we still need to associate it with the map. And you can do that by using the add to method on the data source that we created. So now if we take a look in the browser, you see that we have map content now, and we're focusing in on the area that we selected when accessing OpenStreetMap in the browser. So the next thing to do is to add some markers to this map. So you can do that by calling the marker method on the leaflet library, and you pass into it as an array the coordinates where you want the marker to appear. So I'm going to set the marker for Gatwick Airport. So I can get that via OpenStreetMap in the same way as I did for the set view coordinates. So I'm going to pass these in to the marker method in array format. And as a second argument inside an object, I can set some options to customize the marker. So for good practice, you should include at least a title, which is going to be the auto attribute of the marker in the DOM. And if you want to see this very basic marker, then you need to associate it with the map like we did for the data source. Now, if you take a look at the map, you see that we've got this marker for Gatwick Airport and the auto attribute is displaying when I hover over it. Now, I'll show you how you can add a pop-up to this basic example so that when a user clicks on it, they get some additional information about that location. So you can do this by calling the find pop-up method on the marker you created and passing into it a string that will be rendered to the page as HTML. So I'll just enter some very basic HTML here so we can see it in action. Now, if I go to the page and I click on the marker, you see we're getting some HTML. So this is a very basic example. In practice, you probably want an address, a contact email, a telephone number, something like that. So to save time before this tutorial, I did prepare something along these lines. So a block of HTML with a title and address, a link to a website, which in this case is just Google and a telephone number link. So if we take a look at this now in the browser, this information is available in the pop-up. And when I click on the links, I either go to the website or the browser will try to initiate a phone call or allow you to select an application that will allow you to do that. Now, if you want to start the pop-up, it is HTML. So you can start this with CSS. So back in my document, I've already given a class of pop-up to the span containing the information. And so in CSS, I can style the content in the span by that class. And I'm going to set the text to be a little larger than it is at the moment because it is quite small. So you see now we've got slightly larger text. Now, something else that you might want to customize is the marker. So at the moment we get the default marker, but you can easily change that via the leaflet library. So to do that, you call the icon method, passing in some information about the icon in an object. So the first one that you want to set is a URL for the icon. So I've already downloaded an icon that is in the same folder as this HTML document under the title airport. SVG. So I'm going to set that here as the icon URL. And you'll also want to set some dimensions for the icon. So you can set these as pixels in an array. Now, what you want to do is to save a reference to the icon that you've created. And I'm doing this before I create any markers because I might want to use this for multiple markers. And to make this the icon for a marker, inside the options object on a marker, you set the icon property to custom icon. And now you see that it's displaying a custom icon for that marker instead of the default one. Now, if you want to add multiple markers to this map, one solution would be to create another marker in the same way that we did the first one, but this wouldn't be a very efficient solution because it would involve a lot of code repetition. So a more efficient and maintainable solution 
would be to create a data object containing the data for each of the markers that you want to appear on the map. So I'll create a new data object here. So each value is going to be a property on this object and data associated with each marker is entered as an object, which is the value for each property. So I'll also set markers for Manchester Airport and also Heathrow. So we already have the data for Catwick. We can extract that from the marker that we've created. So the first property that is very important is, of course, the coordinates. The second property is the title. Then I'll add a property for the address. So I'll copy that as a string. You might want to separate this out into individual address lines, but I'm just going to copy the address as it is here. Next, the website. So that, I just need the address. And finally, the telephone number. Now, for the other airports, I'm not going to enter all of this information just to save some time. I'm just going to enter the coordinates. But of course, in practice, you would want to enter all of this information for each of the airports. So let's get the coordinates for the other airports, starting with Manchester. And then the coordinates for Heathrow. And now what I'm going to do above, instead of creating a single marker, is loop through this data, creating as many markers as there are properties in that object. So to loop through the properties on an object, you can use a for in loop and inside each loop you have available to you the current key name and also the data object. So I'm going to place this code where I'm creating a single marker inside the loop and that is going to allow me to create as many markers as there are properties on the object and at the beginning of each loop I'm going to query the object by the current key which is going to give me the data object for each airport. So from here, I need to replace now all of this static information with information coming from the current data object. So I query that airport object by each of the properties that exist in the data object. So for the title, the property name was title. For the address, I replace that with the address property. So to escape inside a template literal, I have to use this special dollar sign syntax. The next bit of information is the website. So that's available on the website property. And finally, the telephone. So this I need to input twice. This is available on the phone property once in the link and once in the text that appears on screen. Now, for convenience, so that I can easily read the data above, I created the data object below the loop. So I need to move the data object up to above the loop for this to work. Otherwise, when the loop runs, the data object will not have been defined already. So I'll place this just after I define the data source. Now, if we take a look at the map, you see that all of those markers have been added to the map without me having to create three markers individually. And now adding an additional marker is as simple as adding some more coordinates to that data object. So I'll get the coordinates for London Luton and I'll create a new property on the object. So I'll place these coordinates in an array here. Now, in practice, you'd want to fill in all of this additional information for each airport. But to keep this example short, I'm just entering the coordinates for each 
additional airport and you can see how much easier that was adding an additional marker so looping through a data object is more setup work but it's a much more maintainable and scalable solution than creating a new marker each time so that's all i've got for you in this tutorial i hope you found this useful if you did please consider hitting the like button down below this video it helps with the algorithm and others to find this video and if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.